Hello, Aaron. I'm pretty sure it's Aaron, right? Uh, welcome to Qual Out. Thanks for accepting the debate. Uh, I see a thumbs up, so I assume that there's no technical issues. You can see and hear me, okay, and all that sort of thing. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it. And uh, this works on three minute intervals, if, if you don't know that already. So you'll have a chance to speak in a second. What is Zionism? Zionism is a belief that Jewish people are entitled to a nation state for biblical reasons as inherent owners. Because of past ownership, they're chosen by God to live there. So they have a God-given right to private property and other things. What's an equality of outcome? It's the belief that a certain group has been underrepresented. Therefore, an equal outcome equates to representation of that tribe or group as an end, regardless of competitive circumstances. Julian, I believe in inclusion of transgenders in the workforce. I think you'd be great for this job. But my values are to hire the other person. And I'm not going to pretend that I care enough about what Ben Shapiro or Milo says. This whole equality of outcome, that's Thomas Sowell's idea that they stole. <laughs> But what? But the state. I have heard Ben Shapiro make a statement, and that's why I, I thought this would be an interesting debate. And his statement, I'll post the video uh, when this is over in the links, is that BDS equals Hamas, Hamas equals human shields, human shields equal unfair warfare, unfair warfare. It's un, It's an unfair competition. So so just like I have to hire this person because of my values, you want to add equality of outcome, and that's what Ben Shapiro is saying. Um, there are a lot of directions that this can go. Um, I, I don't want to fail to mention that Breitbart actually is Israeli. I know they like to talk about Saudi Arabia and say, hey, you took some money from Saudi Arabia. They are Israeli, so they do have a, money, a monetary interest in the uh, Middle East. Um, and But the big thing, because uh, I'll, I'll get to the rest in, in the counter arguments, I imagine, but the thing that I, I uh, think you need to prove to win this debate, I'm just trying to guess what that could be, is what are the Palestinians fighting for that they didn't lose anyway because it's private property that was taken from them. And I, I fully hope to illustrate that. Of course, you can't do that with 10 seconds. So thanks again for what the uh, people who are watching and thanks for accepting the debate and welcome to call out. And I'll go ahead and listen to the counter arguments. All right, so I got three minutes. Cool. Um, so to start off with um, the claim that, that Zionism is, is basically the religious right to a claim of land. Um, now, when I looked up the definition of Zionism, it, it, it didn't really insert the, the religious uh, claim, the biblical claim to a right to land. But we all know that that's uh, effectively uh, a huge part of the motive there. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know particularly, I mean, I looked at some of Ben Shapiro's stuff and, uh, he does believe in the right of the Jewish state, uh, Israel to exist. Um, to, to me, it's, it's a lot of a moot point. They do exist. Uh, they've existed for quite some time now. Yeah. There's not much you can do about that. If you were to take away all of their protections, um, I think we all know what would happen to them, uh, but I, I don't know as far as as far as equating that to the equal um, the, the equality of outcome, which yes, I believe is Thomas Sowell's uh, idea. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to have to go ahead and say that I don't exactly know every detail about the creation of the Jewish state. Um, Obviously, it was handed to them uh, in a very controversial move, and it displaced a lot of people, and that they continued to displace people. Um, you know, I, I'm not really in a position to say right or wrong on that. Um, the, the, the situation as it exists in my view today is that they are there, these, the uh, Jewish people in Israel. The Palestinians are obviously displaced. Um, 
and you have to look at the merits of both sides. I think, from my view, is uh, you know, I I look at the 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 Muslim population living there is is really not not achieving much, not willing to work with the rest of the world as Israel has shown themselves to be. Uh, I, I sort of wane in my sympathy w when you see what comes out of those people. I mean, it, I'm going to put it really simply as far as my, my personal opinion on the subject. The, the Jewish people, as far as I know, uh, do not wish for the end of the world to come. They're, they're not really obsessed with Armageddon. But when you look at the Muslim people in that area, that, that's their silver lining, as, as Sam Harris would put it. They want destruction, death, um, the, the, the caliphate and Sharia law. So it, it, to me, it's all about who you can work with. Oh, okay, it's back to me now. Um, Zionism actually, uh, there's a lot of, people have always beliefs about Zionism, but it is a biblical, it is a belief. The only evidence um, is biblical. Um, that, so the whole thing is centered around the idea that it's that God gave them this land to live on, and that's why they have the right to this private property. It's not theirs. So it's not their private, it's not, it's not, it's private property that was taken in the first place. Um, so going on to your second point, um, I, I actually, um, I understand where you're coming from. I know I've only been interested in this for about five years myself. I didn't, I'm not going to pretend I knew much about it either, but being it since I found out about it, it's just been so fascinating. That's just my favorite thing to, to study and talk about. Um, uh, it's, it is a problem on both sides, and um, actually, my next debate on this, I'll, I'll be talking about a solution. So, so you'll hear my opinion on that more in the in the next debate that I that I do. Um, uh, 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 but I think a lot of what your argument it kind of it kind of rests on a bias that the Muslim that Muslims are are bad people, and I guess the first place to go with that is to point out that. Uh, uh, that the Muslims uh, who are being oppressed in this case, that they actually are, uh, in comparison to other Muslim countries, they actually were very advanced in their economy and highly educated and had more uh, American values or liberal values or whatever you want to put that. Um, uh, the second place to go with that is that um, this is, I mean, this is the best way. I mean, I, I'm just going to go ahead and show this. I show this in a lot of my debates. And the thing is, and I'll post this up when it's, the debate's over. But the thing is, the first the first uh, rectangle that you see, that is what the UN said Israel could be. It's 55% of the land. This is the partition plan from 1948. So Israel is in the first rectangle. They are 55% of the land, even though they're 10% of the population. That's in 1948. By the time 1967 rolls around, they have another war. Who started the war? That's who you ask. Anyway, they occupy all this territory. And if you go to today, they occupy over 90 percent of the territory and they're not supposed to be there. It's condemned by the U.N. And that's that's what. So it's private property that's being stripped away. The, the Palestinians are basically being ethnic cleansed and pushed out and having their property stripped away from them. And this includes Jerusalem. So this is their settlements that they're going around Jerusalem. And this is very recent. I think this is from. December 2016. So, so that all these holy sites are in Jerusalem and they want to destroy the uh, Muslim holy site and build their own holy site there. All right. Well, yeah, that, that map, and I've seen that map before, um, you know, <laughs> they, they were granted a certain amount of land and then they started pushing the limits to that, um, that they're acting very much as humans are, are want to act. And th that's just a fact of, of life. Again, right or wrong, it's simply how it's going over there. Now, uh, as far as they're, again, touching on their biblical claims to land, I mean, yeah, I mean, you ask the, the Muslims and they'll say they have a, a, a divine claim to that land. If you ask the Jews, they will say they have a divine cl claim to that land. Um, it, when it comes to this, I look at it similarly to as I look at the, the situation with the Native Americans and the European settlers. Um, it doesn't matter if Wahatanka tells you that that land is yours. 
It's not about who got there first. It's about who can hold it down. And that's human nature. And we'll have a really difficult time arguing about what the best way to go about it is. I mean, that's what politics is for. That's what border relations are for, and, uh, you know, relationships with neighboring countries. And on that note, I think that the Israelis are, are winning out. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen any footage, you know, and of course, this is what always gets brought up. Uh, I haven't seen the Israelis using human shields or firing from hospitals, uh, thinking that they won't be struck. Um, as far as who's taken the high road more often, uh, I, again, I would err on the side of the Israelis. Um, that does not mean that I, I don't think about innocent people and, and private property that was taken um, or what they claim is, is private property. Uh, you know, it, it it's a whole mess over there. One thing I will say is that um, the reason that the United States is so interested in this and, and does support the state of Israel is because they are the uh, they are the camp. They're the base set up in a very, very tumultuous part of the world that can't seem to drag itself uh, out of the dark ages. And it seems like the Israelis can and have and will continue to do so. Um, you know, again, both sides of this fight. Um, have claims against each other. And, and if you want to get an answer, it really depends on, on who you talk to. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I don't particularly think that, that anyone's opinion on the mat matter matters other than the Israelis and the Palestinians. And if they could come to some sort of a consensus, that'd be great. But it appears that it's on the Palestinian side, in my opinion, that they don't want to come to any consensus. Uh so, so just going through your points again, um, I mean, of course, these aren't really, you're not really telling me about what's in an inequality of outcome and what isn't here. Um, that's what the debate's about. So I, I, you know, I have to mention that as far as the arguments going forward. But, uh, you know, I appreciate talking to you, so I don't mind going through your points and speaking to you about these things. Um, uh, the So, so uh, you know, I, I, I can't really address your first the first things that you said without talking about a solution and I'm, and I, I don't have time to do that today, but I will in the next debate and I have in other debates. Um, uh, as far as the Israelis are running out, the thing is in human shields and stuff, I, I, Gaza, because I know they talk about Gaza and Gaza and the West Bank have totally different governments. And so the Palestinians are not unified. So it's hard. To, you can't really talk about one and say it's all the Palestinians. And then, of course, a lot of the Palestinians don't even live in these territories. They live in Lebanon and Syria and Jordan. A lot of them, and that is the plan, I think, really, is to get them to all just leave the territory completely and go to one of those countries. Um, so the thing is, you say they're more moral. They, they use chemical weapons. They use nuclear weapons. I don't know, it doesn't really have anything to do with the Palestinians, but they accuse Iran of trying to build nuclear weapons in secret. They built nuclear weapons in secret, and the Pentagon says so. Um, uh, and it's, and as, as I said, these, these people are advanced. They do have American and liberal values. I'm not going to tell anyone what their values should be anyway. Um, uh, so, so I think it's really their oppression, and that goes back to uh, Gaza. Um, I mean, not that there isn't a military occupation in the West Bank, and that's where the ter territory is being stolen. The thing is that Gaza is completely surrounded. So they control everything that goes in and out of there, how much food these people can eat, uh, you know, how much water they have, so forth and so on. And they're not supposed to be doing that either. Um, so so I, I, they, I mean, what kind of economy can you have when you live under a blockade? Or the opposite, you live under a military occupation. So so, And this is ongoing. It's not just for a little while, and it's not about security because they're building there, they're, which is illegal under the Fourth Geneva Convention that was written because of the Holocaust in the first place. <laughs> so so they're, they're violating the very same thing by doing this. That, that's, the whole, that's the whole idea here. These are unbinding international laws. It doesn't matter if the UN's a good idea or not. So that's a separate debate. They, they, they're, they're, violating, they're violating the Fourth Geneva Convention and the international laws that the US and UN have to enforce and that the U.S. and U.N. have to keep an eye on this area because they created the problem with two states in the first place. 
Huh. Well, you know, I, I imagine that would probably agree on more than we disagree on the subject, but we have to get down to the, the equality of outcome uh, point here in order to really address the topic, as you said. Um, and so when you talk about equality of outcome, it's typically talked about in relation to equality of opportunity, which I think in and itself is fallacious. Um, but I, it, it goes down to the original reason why these, these people were granted this land in the first place. And it's because of their own displacement and the Holocaust and the horror and, you know, uh, it wasn't my decision to give them this plot of land. I'm not going to say, you know, that maybe that was their way of giving them an equality of opportunity or something as, as close to that as they could muster. Um, and, and it's obviously not going to equal some sort of an equality of outcome for either the Jewish people uh, or the Palestinians, or rather it, it will be one or the other that wins out in that region. Um, you know, it, it's not going to be equal. They didn't have equal footing in the first place. Um, it, it appears, obviously, from the map that you showed that the, the Israelis have done a, a good job of, of gaining territory, holding it down, while still keeping some favor with the rest of the world, which doesn't seem to be the same case with the Palestinians. Um, and they, they, they'd really, it would behoove them to change their PR campaign a little bit. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen and I think it's going to get worse. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm sitting here in Vermilion, Ohio, so I don't really have much <laughs> to offer these people and I don't think they'd want my help. I, I don't think they want anyone's help. I think both sides are so brutalized that they just want each other dead. And that's the way that that cookie's going to crumble. Um, so, you know, as far as Milo or or Ben Shapiro or anyone who would say would support the state of Israel yet criticize equality of outcome. I, I would just say that the outcome as of right now is is unseen and it will not be equal. Um, <laughs> that's for sure. So it, to me, to me, it's just sort of a moot point uh, of the mess of the Israeli Palestinian conflict. I, I don't really know what else to say about it other than my own opinion that, that yes, I would rather live and work with and be next to someone who of the Jewish persuasion than I would someone of the Islamic faith. And that is just a, a culture thing. And, and, and that's my shtick. So. Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about the solution as far as somebody going to win, um, uh, and, and so much as, um, I, I, but I want to. So I want to start by your point that the um, that what the Israelis are doing is in favor of the world. It's absolutely not, and this is something also I know Ben Shapiro talks about because it was another video that he made. I I care to watch it. I don't know what he says, but the thing is that just in 2016. Uh, the UN came out with this huge report that it is apartheid. It's 36 pages long. It blew me away. I've never seen anything like it. You know, people have been saying this stuff for a long time, and I've heard a lot of people say it, and I've never seen anything like this report. It's spot on. It's well put together. It documents everything, every argument that can be made. It's in there. Um, so it's, been, it's being condemned by the world. I, I mean, there's hundreds of resolutions. I have another debate where I talk about the UN and Israel. So... So you can hear me talk about it there. Someone says I'm leaving something out. I was watching this and not talked about. I talk about all this stuff. Talked about it before. Um, but for the for the sake of uh, this debate, uh, you say that the is what the Israelis is doing is in favor of the world. It's not. And the thing is that the that every time the UN tries to do something about it, the US has veto power. We veto it. It happens all the time. So it's just symbolic. So the UN can't do anything anyway. And that's that's would be if we were arguing if the UN is a good idea or not. That would be the lead argument. They can't solve this conflict. It has been an argument that countries have made at the UN. Um, uh, I'm not saying, but the, and when you say say I, uh, you know, like I'm I'm here in Canal, Winchester, Ohio. I'm outside of Columbus. I think you're you're just north of me, if, um, or maybe a little more towards Cleveland. Uh, yeah, my my twin brother lives in Cleveland actually. Uh, uh, the thing is, we're only giving Israel about 
20 million dollars a day and that's that's actually a low estimate believe it or not and it just keeps going up it went up when we had this gaza war it went up when we did the iran deal it's, it's only going up um uh so the u.s does dictate this outcome um now uh, the thing is like like they criticize like somebody like ron paul because he says he wants to cut off the aid well and people like Ron Paul because he says that or whatever. Well, the thing is that Ron that Ron Paul will point out that if you cut off that he wants to cut off the aid because it would actually help Israel because the U.S. and the U.N. don't have to tell him what to do anymore because we're not giving him a check to do it. <laughs> That's his. So so <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's coming out of our pockets, and that's why it's a problem. And that's all we can do is stop it coming out of our pocket anyway. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, it's definitely coming out of the taxpayers' pockets, and I am not a fan of that. So I have to ask myself the question, it, would I voluntarily give my money to the state of Israel to continue supporting in their defense? And, and I likely would give them something be, because I view the Middle East as a particularly uh, insidious problem that will only get worse and and i and i think that the best bet and the lesser of two evils would be to to support israel as opposed to uh, a sort of islamic foundation of, of, a, of a nation now you say that uh, the things that the israelis are doing aren't in favor of the rest of the world um I, you know i recall that un report coming out and i did not read it uh, i didn't really look into it but i i saw the discourse at the UN uh, from from Israel and, and talking about how it's apartheid. And and so the, the, the gentleman that was speaking on behalf of Israel pointed the finger basically at everyone else and said, you know, when you kicked the Jews out of here, was that not, you know, when you did this, was that not the same thing, you know? And, and Israel uh, is multicultural. There are Muslims living in Israel. Uh, most of which are doing so peacefully and, and have assimilated in in in, in cahoots. Um, I, I just don't see I don't see the the world actually acting on Israel. Uh, I, I think it's a bunch of huffing and puffing. And like you said, the United States does really determine what happens. Now, if we did cut off Israel from the two hundred million dollars plus a day. They they would be up the creek. They would still have a paddle, but but not a lot of energy for very long to get through that. And and I think they would be gutted like fish. And and I just I, I don't want to see history go that way for them. So um, they're, they're at least I will say this: they're at least more in favor of the rest of the world than the Palestinians or or the the Muslims that occupy that region. So. They're doing something right to, to still have the support of the United States, um, to still have the support of, of Christians uh, around the world. Um, you know, and I've seen Hasidic Jews criticize the, the fact that, that the Israeli people shouldn't have a state. Um, you know, it, it's, it's everyone's little opinion. But the, the fact is that they're there. They're human beings. They're territorial. Uh, if there's land that they can claim, they're probably going to do it. Uh, and, and until it becomes a problem for us, we're not going to stick our noses in. The, th the thing is, um, I think they would be okay if we didn't give them the money. And, um, I think like Ron Paul suggests that they would actually come out on top. Um, the reason for that is that they, well, they have the seventh most, they have the seventh most, the bet, the set, their number seven army in the world or whatever. <laughs> um, but they have nuclear weapons and they, they, they don't care. They'll use them. And the reason I say that they don't care, they'll use them is because they threatened to use them. They threatened to use them in 1967 and they threatened to use them again in 1972. So they threatened to use the weapons before. So everyone, everyone knows that they have the weapons. They'll use the weapon weapons. Um, it would, I mean, maybe they it would force them to solve this because I'm not saying that it shouldn't it shouldn't exist. It already exists anyway, and and I, you know I I don't want to make moral arguments about if it was a good idea or not. I mean, I'm part Jewish. I have Jewish relatives. 
it's it, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I just don't think that they're good arguments. They're not because they're just a virtual solution anyway. Um, as far as Christians around the world, you keep saying these people are Muslim, but the thing is that a lot of them are Christians. They're the Christians that live there in the, in the same time as the Bible. They occupied a third of Jerusalem and it was taken from them. It was stolen from them. They, they, and, the, and, and I mean, as far as the solution goes under the partition plan, Jerusalem, because these holy sites are there, it's supposed to be an international city. The UN and this plan that didn't work in 1948, this failed two-state solution that we're, that we're starting the history here, um, it's supposed to be controlled by the UN, and it isn't. And the, the, the UN, when the first thing they did when the, uh, the UN tried to intervene was kill the person they sent. <laughs> and they started taking the land less than a week later. Uh, and people actually, there's actually people who believe, I've heard a senator say that he went into uh, Ariel Sharon's office and there's the map for Greater Israel. And Greater Israel, what's that? Well, that's parts of Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq. Uh, Iraq. It's, it's, a, it's a much larger area than what they have. So they want this whole, this, uh, this large area of land. They, they believe they're entitled to all of it because that's what it says in the Bible. Um, that's so we have a war going on in Syria, and who's funding these these people who are fighting in Syria? Israel is, the United States is. So we're we are actually contributing to um, these conflicts and uh, this greater. And they already have parts of Syria and they have parts of Egypt. So we're actually contributing to them having more territory that they shouldn't have openly. And I mean. You know, however you feel about the, what I said in the Syria war, it's not going to change the fact that the U.S. and Israel. Well, I mean, it's particularly telling, you know, when they have a map of greater Israel and it, and it cites the religious stuff. I mean, you know, religious claims to land are obviously nonsense um, or, the, or obviously what I believe is is absolute nonsense. Um, <laughs> but but again, you know, the Christians and, and Jews having conflicts, I mean, that's gone on for quite some time, but seems to be a bit more hopeful than the conflict between uh, Jews and Muslims and Christians and Muslims. It just appears that there's this one group that, that really wants to see everything burn. Not that Christians don't with their with their book of revelations, um, but they're they're really muted and, and they're really mild now and they, they've become moderate. Uh, not that that doesn't harbor some extremism, it does, just as the Muslims do it, and I'm sure there's there's some Jewish extremists as well. Um, but I, I foresee that a lot of that territory will, uh, you know, Egypt and, and the surrounding territories there will eventually fall to someone else's hands, um, because I think that the, the, this conflict with Islam is going to continue to get much, much worse. And if someone's going to end up using nuclear weapons. We know if it, <laughs> these Muslim countries get nuclear weapons, that they'll likely use them for whatever purpose. Um, you know, it's it's just sort of their their nature as dictated by their their texts. Um, but you know, it's it's just a whole mess. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, look at North Korea. I mean, you know, they have the they have nuclear technology and the capability to send something to the United States now, not with much accuracy, but still could. Um, and and we should view North Korea and and Islamic countries that promote Sharia law and and do as they want to do. We should treat them the exact same. And, and so I side with Sam Harris on the argument to very strongly giving consideration to a first strike. Uh, in order to take these nefarious people off of the face of the planet uh, so that we don't have to lose 500,000 to 1.7 million people in a single strike because someone in some ridiculous country with some ridiculous belief wants to destroy others based on the fact that they're not them. And, uh, you know, we, we could go back and forth and say, well, you're doing it in this way or, you know, it's it's hypocritical and stuff. It's just the way it is, you know, and it's it's human nature and someone's going to get that land and, and someone's going to establish dominance and the conflict is going to rage on and on. So I don't I don't see a solution. Uh, I do believe that there this can be solved. I just don't believe that um, 
the UN or US or Israel are working together to actually solve this. I think the plan actually is, uh, as I'm suggesting, I mean, there's a whole one other spirit is still here, but that they want all the land. They're going to push the Palestinians out. They're just going to keep conquering and getting more territory, and it's going to be perpetual conflict as a result. <clears throat> um, uh, and I, I can prove that here and there. So the fact that I can prove that is that the U.S. Is, and Israel are both funding the conflict in Syria. I can prove that. Um, can't shouldn't be able to mention that Iraq. They are an ally of the Palestinians. Um, uh, they, uh, but uh, so, so you talk about Egypt. The thing is, um, Egypt made a deal. Jimmy Carter made a deal with Egypt, and uh, ever since then, basically, uh, we've been giving Egypt a lot of money. So the, uh, we so we are Egypt's military. The U.S. controls Egypt's military, and Egypt's military controls the country of Egypt. They control who's in power. Mubarak out of power after all that stuff happened a few years back. That would be the example. Um, and I really, totally, I mean, I totally agree with you that it's a mess. Um, and, but I think that the reason, I think that the the thing with it being a mess. Oh no, my computer battery is getting low. Um, uh, the thing with it being a mess is, uh, I think this is the reason why. Maybe it's maybe there's other reasons, but I think this is the central reason that there is a conflict with Islam to begin with. I think it's Jerusalem. I think that they're very upset about it. I think that's why people like Milo and Ben Shapiro they have a bias that Israel would belong to them and not the Palestinians, and that's that's really what's going on here. Because the thing is, um, I mean, uh, these Arab countries, they have resources and something that this area has, there really aren't a lot of resources there. And they, I mean, they have great technology, actually, the Israelis, they're very advanced. They, the reason we can talk to each other today is because of the technology that they that they created. Um, I mean, uh, uh, the thing is, uh, you say if a first strike, the Palestinians don't have a military. Um, so it's basically like a lot, a lot of yahoos. And the example that I will go to is in the Gaza conflict. There were mass casualties of Palestinians, women and children. They were, I don't have the number offhand, the exact number, but I know it was in the thousands. And I know that they were, it's in at least in hundreds for women and children. Nope. It looks like it turned over to me, man. Um, did you want to keep going or? Yeah. Two minutes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll pass it back to you here in a second. I'll just say, um, yeah, I'm sure your battery is going to die anyways. But, um, yeah, you know, I, like I said, you know, I'll admit ignorance to a lot of the subject and it. You know, I'm not from there. It doesn't really concern me. All that concerns me is their, their capabilities uh, <laughs> in the future. Um but, you know, yeah, we, we, we can both agree it's a mess. Uh, it's not really much of our business. <laughs> but we don't what we don't want is we don't want what a lot of the people in 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 Muslim controlled countries. And, and we can rely on Pew Research uh, to so that we can accurately say that it's, it is a, a majority. It's either 50 percent or a majority believe in a what would be defined as extremist views um you know that that's an internal problem with the muslim community you know when christians do reform and and, and jews do some form of reform in their own religion in their own communities you know that that just brings them into the modern world and we see an, an abject refusal of the majority of of muslims to do that and, and so i think that that they're going to get what they're going to get uh, because of that and, you know, it, it's adapt or die. And I see the other religions as being slightly more adaptive, not that they're not going to die. Eventually, um, they'll, they'll, they'll fizzle out, but uh, maybe we'll get a new Jedi religion that takes over something stupid like that. But uh, I, I just see the Muslims as doing, uh, doing the absolute wrong path to, uh, to, to finding any sort of resolution or solution, which, which I don't really see much until, until many, many years later. 
So with that, I'll, I'll pass back to you. Uh, you know, I, I think that we, from my, from my, we have, you know, been following your page for a while. I know that we have some similar religious beliefs as well. And, the, and I say that because I mentioned this because, uh, I used to think it was just a religious thing and, I, and now I, I really regret that because it's not, um, it's, it is, uh, it's the belief in an equality of outcome. So, you know, God gave me this land, um, and it needs to be resolved as far as you just can't let it go on we're going to solve these problems i mean maybe we're going to disagree i know we're, we're we have to agree to disagree at this point but if we're going to solve these problems we're going to have to focus on the solution and uh the solution that uh ben shapiro wants is that uh he he has a right to that land and that the other person doesn't because god said so so he wants uh an equality of outcome uh and we need to, and so uh that really discredits uh other things that he says um it's not uh for me um not that i really care anyway i just thought it would be a good debate to have um uh, yeah so yeah we're running out of time uh you have a little bit more time than i do um so i, I guess i'll just go ahead and pass it back and then maybe just do a follow-up. Right. Well, I appreciate the shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've got like three of them hanging out here. Um, you must have been one of the other three people who bought one. But, um, uh, you, you know, the, this we would love to see an outcome. I mean, it's not that I, I, I don't want there to be some sort of a solution to this, um, but I, I don't necessarily know if, if Ben Shapiro believes, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I just don't know if he believes that the uh, that, that he is technically given a divine right to it. So I might be wrong. I, I tried looking up clips to where he said something to that effect, but I didn't really get anything. So if that's floating out there, I'd like to, I'd like to know if he believes that because I subscribe to the daily wire and, uh, and I'd like to bust his balls cause I can, cause I'm a subscriber and, and they, they allow you to, to write directly to him and they'll respond. Um, but yeah, I mean, if he's got a ridiculous belief, I'd like to tackle it. I don't necessarily believe that it, it sort of discredits other things that he says. If he believes in an equality of outcome, I, I, I would call him out on that just like anybody else would, but I'd, I'd sort of have to hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, so if you do have that information, do please send that over to me. So, um, yeah, but yeah, I'll pass it back to you. Okay. Um, well, I'll admit that um, Ben Shapiro is, is an uh, Orthodox Jew. I've heard him say this the thing is Orthodox Jews actually don't believe in Zionism. They don't believe in it because they, they believe in the Torah. It says that the Jewish people left Jerusalem and the Holy Land for a reason that God didn't want to be there. So they don't they don't support Zionism. Um, so I'm not sure if he believes this or not, but uh, I think that would be great because he never debates this. And the stuff he says is not about it is nonsense. And he won't debate it. He's such a great debater. Tell him to debate it, please. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's. A good thing to, to write in. I also have a bone to pick with Andrew Clavin. I actually saw him come to speak when he went to uh, Oberlin College here. And I, I live, I'm like sort of in between Cleveland and Toledo. I'm right on the lake. It's a small sailing town up here. Um, but yeah, right, you know, about 30 minutes from Oberlin College. And Andrew Clavin, you know, he he sort of converted to to Christianity and, and he talks about God a lot and they always cite God. And I don't think they realize that if they, they want to advocate for conservative values and uh, logical uh, free thinking and free enterprise and stuff that when they throw the God in there, just a, it just bugs me so much because I remember myself at age 18, 19, huh, 17, maybe even before that, um, just anything religious would would have I would have a visceral reaction to and it sort of just muddies anything that you're doing and you can drive very intelligent people to the other side of the aisle um, obviously I have a conservative leaning now at this point in my life 
Um, but I didn't always, and, and that was an issue. And so that that's 